Amazing. Mm. I am so grateful to be here and a part of this day because it has just been so rich. Spiritual. So it's like thick in the house. And I appreciate that. Spirit is definitely here because I need him. I left my notes at Yay, <laughs> <laughs> and Brother Bill went to left church and went to get them and bought the wrong notebook. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> I would like to reread out of Revelations 2. Um, the letter to the church at Ephesus, verse 4, and it says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, or this against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. And, I were, and if I were to give you a thought to hang your hat on this morning, it would be the church on Straight Street. The church on Straight Street. Our Father and our God, you know at this time your handmaiden depends solely upon you. Not my intellect and not my understanding, O oh God, but may your Holy Spirit fill this empty vessel in such a way, O oh God, that you can use me to bless your people. They've gathered in this place, O oh God, to hear from you and not from me anyway. So use my voice to speak to them. Use my mind to convey a thought. Use my intellect, if you will, O oh God. And then hide me behind the glory cloud. So I'm no longer seen. And I am not heard, oh God. But you will have your way in this place. This day. For your glory, do we already declare that it is. Amen. Amen. Nevertheless, I have this against thee. Because you have left thy first love. The church on Straight Street came out of last week's message when we talked about um, stumbling on Straight Street. And we know that Straight Street is an actual road in the city of Damascus, which is there today. Straight Street is um, described um, by um, Encyclopedia or Encyclopedia, what is that thing on the internet? Wikipedia. Wikipedia. As a street that's straight one mile long and it has huge gates at both ends. And on each side of this, um, this, this wide boulevard, there's shops and apartments and all of that stuff. So it's like a, a good center of the city. And we found out that uh, last week that Saul, who was a murderous mercenary, was on his way to Damascus to judge those he thought worthy of judging. And he ended up being led by the hand because he was blinded by the light, knocked off his donkey, and his posse, as it were, had to lead him by the hand to the house of Judas, located on Straight Street. And and we said that he stumbled because uh, he thought he was doing right in his own understanding, being taught of the law of his ancestors, sitting under the feet of Gamel while he learned, but he didn't know anything about Jesus until he met him on the road to Damascus. And this huge um, personality was not whimpering to the ground, blind not only spiritually but physically now, and had to be led instead of leading. He had to be led to Judas's house located on Straight Street. And then we talked about a devoted disciple called Ananias who um, he heard the voice of God and recognized when God was speaking but it took like five verses for him to actually get to do what God had called him to do so not only new converts but even dedicated disciples can stumble when we go on straight street straight street is is um, analogous or is associated with a conversion it's associated with a different being different in your spirit and in your spiritual growth. And and so when I we're talking about the church on Straight Street. When we're talking about the church on Straight Street, we're gonna talk about the church stumbling on a street called Straight. 
When we look in Revelations 2, and we're talking about the church at Ephesus, this letter was written to them. Um, and it said, because Jesus said through John, write this letter. He said, I know your works, and your labors, and your patience, and how you cannot bear them which are evil, because you've tried them. Them which say that they are apostles and are not, but they have been found to be liars. And what I um, related that to was, God said, I see all the hard work that you accomplished in the church. Mm -hmm. I know that you um, reach out into the community. I know you've touched the poor. You have fed the hungry and you've clothed the naked. You give a cold glass of water to anyone who thirsts. I see that and I appreciate it. He also said in this letter, he said, you cannot bear them which are evil because you try them. You don't just let anybody come up in your group and say anything they want, but you try them by the Spirit to know whether they are true to the uh, dictates and the mandates of the Bible. Because you just um, just don't say, well, I'm, I'm prophet so-and-so from Chicago, and I want, I want to prophesy to your people. You just don't do that because you try them according to to what the Holy Spirit dictates. He said, I know that you don't tolerate evil people. And if they're not the apostles, and you find them to be liars, then you have you have just done away with them. You have not allowed them to speak into your spirit anything. And then he says in verse 3, he said, you have gone through a lot of hardships. You have gained people and lost people. You have planned big things and they turned out to be very small. You have, um, have, have been talked about in the city because of your dreams and the ideals you hold. He said, but this I appreciate, that you have not lost heart. You didn't cave in and give up 36 years ago because somebody said, oh, they won't last. Nothing's going on over there at 1827 Oakwood. He said, no, you've endured. And when they said you would never accomplish it, you accomplished it with great gain. Yes. But it hasn't always been easy. You haven't always been the success you wanted to or you had in your mind to be. He said, but I'm grateful that you never gave up, yes. that you never came in, yes. and that you never quit. Yes. So I've seen all of this that you've done and all of this that you've endured, all of this that you have gone through, and I appreciate it. He said, yet. Oh, when I, when I read that word, yet. It could be but. It could be yet. It could be whatever three-letter word. He said, but I have this against you. How can... Jesus Christ had anything against the church who gives to the poor and, and feeds the hungry and clothes the naked, is willing to give a cold glass of water to anyone who thirsts, who reaches out rather than reaches in, who blesses the city. He said, I have something against you. He said, because you left your first love. We're going to find out what, how a church stumbles on straight street today. Because when you leave your first love, that's a stumble. Now, it would be terrible if um, Bill discovered that I was talking to the first guy I ever had feelings for. It wouldn't do his heart much good if he knew that when he was out of the house that I would call up. I don't even know who it was, but let's just, let's just say a William, which is him, a William. And he found all of these phone calls to a William, and he would ask me, well, who was that? And I'd say, oh, well, that was my first boyfriend, the one I fell in love with. How do you think that would make him feel? Not too good. And it would crush him. And I don't know if he could love me like he loves me now if he found out that I was talking to my first love. Because whatever number he is, he should be the only. Hello, somebody. Talking real here. So, leaving your first love is important to Christ because he names it. 
And he said, I have this against you. All the good stuff that you've done, all the outreach, all of the things that you have made um, yourself popular because of feeding the hungry and clothing the naked. He said, I have this against you. I'm not discounting all the good stuff you did, but I have a problem. So everything you do ain't all right with him. He said, I have it against you. I'm holding it against you that you left your first love. And he doesn't mean that you walked away from the church. He doesn't mean that you are in the church but not of the church. He says you left your first love, which means you're not doing the things that you were doing with the heart of love that you started out with. That now you find yourself just going through the motions. What does that mean? That um, you get up on a Sunday morning and you don't want to just just get ready for church. You have to make sure that you your Versace shoes and your um, your Karen Donna Karen outfit and your perfume is just right because you want somebody to notice you. When you first got saved, if you had a clean pair of jeans, honey, you were on your way to church and you didn't care what anybody said about you. Now, if your name isn't in the program and, and, and they're giving you vocal accolades because of all the stuff you did behind the scene, you get upset and you start complaining. That the work you started off doing because you were so excited about God working on the inside of you that now you complain because you have to do it by yourself. Because you're here alone and it's not, you know, working out. That's how we know that you have lost your first love. Stuff that didn't bother you before begins to bother you. Stuff you never complained about, you start complaining about. And then you make excuses for not doing it. God is taking us somewhere amazing great. But he doesn't want us going through the motions when we get there. Because there are persons that we're going to have to minister to because they're coming. And you can't do it half-heartedly. You can't do it just going through the motions. You need to be in love with the Christ that you are sharing. You have to have a fervency about your love for him. You know how it was when you first got saved. They couldn't keep you out the church. Every new verse just opened up your mind to the love and the mercy and the grace of God. And now that we can quote half the Bible with every address correct, we have, we're going, growing cold and distant from him. He said, I don't want that. He said, with all the good stuff you do, I would rather you be hot or cold. Because this lukewarm stuff makes me vomit if you get the, um, the message interpretation. He said, I don't want you lukewarm. You, you, you have a work to do. You have, a, you have a, a mission to accomplish with me. But you have to be hot or cold. And if you're cold, I can leave you alone. If you're warm, I have a place for you. I'm going to use you. But this lukewarm, I'm good on Sunday, but not so good on Monday. By the time Wednesday roll around, I done warmed up to the idea of coming back. And honey, if you don't catch me by, by Thursday night, Friday night, I don't know about Sunday. He doesn't want that. He said, you've lost your first love. There are many of us sitting in this congregation that we're sitting on our talents. We're sitting on what God has already called us to do, to do, to do and to go and to be. And we don't want to because I'm not feeling it. Well, he wants you to feel something. He wants you to understand purpose and he wants you to understand gifting. He doesn't gift you to look good. He doesn't gift you just to sit up in the church and say, I could do it better than that. Then why don't you do it? Stop complaining about how it's done and you start doing it, okay? We're talking about a church stumbling on State Street, on Straight Street. And you know what? He didn't say that it was one person or two people. He said to the church, I have this against you. So it's a church-wide epidemic. It's a church-wide affliction. You've lost your love. You're going through the motions. I don't care how much good you do. But this is important because he said you don't have to stay in that state. He says, remember therefore from 
from where you've fallen and repent. It's important enough for him to say, you better get this thing right. It's important, important enough to say, repent. That means you don't have to be in that state and stay in that state because God is going to do something in that state you don't want him to do. He says repent. That means recognize where, you, how, how fervent you were, how warm you were, how on fire for God you were, and then compare yourself to none. If there is a difference in how much love you had and how your fervency of worship, then you need to get back to that. Understand that where you've fallen, you've fallen because you started depending on you. When you when you fail, you started like relying on your own strength, your own resources. Oh, I'm clever enough to get that done. Right. We're doing the work of God without ever consulting him. We're not asking him, well, Lord, what do you want? I have the lesson and this is the scripture, but how do you want it taught? I have to reach this many people, oh God, with this much food. How do you want me to distribute it? How do you, how should I touch them? How should I be a blessing? We're doing the work of God and we haven't asked him one time. That's impossible. Or he asks you to do something specific and no, I don't want to. I'm afraid. I'm too busy. I do too much in the church now. Everybody, at least in Amazing Grace, wears at least three hats. Some of us four and some of us five. Well. But until he sends those that we need, then you cannot say, well, I'm not feeling it today. Amen. 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 The work still has to be accomplished. Amen? Yes. And if you're not doing something to urge on this, the completion of these tasks, then I'm going to ask you why you're coming. What you doing here? If it's just to sit in a pew, don't bother. If it's just so that you can say you came to church, don't bother. But if you are here and you've lost your zeal, your, your fervency, your fire, he said all you have to do is repent and start doing the first things again. Amen. It says in verse 5, remember from where you've fallen and repent and do the first work. You know the stuff you used to do when you first got saved that you were on fire? Where you where you you prayed in earnest. You would even pray about a parking space. I was just I was just that into it. I would say, Lord, I need a parking space, five spaces from the door. It's raining and it's cold, and I belong to you, and you're gonna take care of me. And I will tell you that that childlike faith allowed God to give me a space by the door. And it just encouraged me, okay, Lord, the tire's going flat. I'm laying hands on this tire, and you're going to fix it in Jesus' name. It just made you just so open to God moving anyway and, and anyhow. And if he didn't, he said, I just ask I amiss. It's me, God, and it's not you. And now you pray, and God doesn't answer quick enough, excuse me. Hello, I prayed. It's, it's me again, God. And he'll go. And? He does that to me. I don't know if he does that to you. Like, didn't you hear me? I prayed. And he says, yes. And? Because we get so comfortable God blessing and God using and God manifesting that we get so caught up in it that we start, you know, rubbing on the Bible and making three wishes like it was a genie lamp. Hello, somebody. We quote a scripture and we expect God to look thunder and lightning down from the sky because it's us. We no longer have a love for him and a fervency for his work. We just go doing what we always did because we always did it just like that. And he says, no, for the place I'm taking you, you need to have a love again. You need to be on fire, love. You know that kind where you couldn't, you left a date and couldn't hardly get upstairs and you called it. That kind of love. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Or you didn't even date and you stayed on the phone for two, three, and four hours just talking. Well, what you doing? Nothing. What you doing? No, nah, nah, I'm not doing anything. You gonna do anything? No, you gonna do anything? You know, anybody have those conversations besides me? Okay. Hello. Or you just you just breathe into the phone to know, make sure he was still there. 
I'm serious. I've had those conversations. But you couldn't hang up because he might say something. Or you might think of something to say. You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> Nobody had those kind of conversations. White hot love. Just the chance to be near somebody who knew him. When, we, when I first got saved, nothing stopped me. And I was the only one saved in my family, so they thought something was wrong. Honey, I would think about the goodness of the Lord and start speaking in tongues. And you know, for a Methodist girl, that ain't a good thing. Because my mother thought they were working roots on me. Really. But... We don't have to stay in this lukewarm, going through the motions, if we remember what it was like when we first got yes, saved. Amen. And do the things that we did. We, we went from house to house, and if we only had a bowl of beans, we bought a bowl of beans and added it to their greens, and somebody bought potatoes, and we feasted not only in food, but we feasted on the goodness and the mercy of God. Right. We shared our testimonies, just what he was yeah. doing. Yeah. And it... And it Reem's testimony will stir me up and I say next week when we meet I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what he's done for me. Yeah. And just sharing and, and caring enough to just share the goodness of God. Amen. 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 Because I tell you it's important enough to God to tell us to repent. Because at the end of verse 5 it says or else I will come quickly <coughs> And remove your candle, <coughs> your candlestick out of this place, except you repent. This is what when I when I just dissected that verse and got the Hebrew and started. He said, "I'm going to unchurch you." He said, "I'm going to take out the gospel, which is the truth. I'm going to take out the ministers. I'm going to take out the preachers." In other words, he's going to dissociate you from the body. He's going to dissociate you from those he claimed to be his. He's going to cut you off from the blessings and the benefit of belonging to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's like you're standing in front of him. He said, I never knew you. It's important enough for him to write it down, says, repent and start doing the first thing, the first work. When you first fell in love with me, start doing those things. Yes. Because I'm going to come and pluck up your lampstand yes. and take it out of its place. Yes. To me, that was serious. Yes. I said, Lord, should I, should I share that? And I kind of glossed over it in my notes. That's probably why they're home. Because it's serious enough yes. to God to write yes. it down. Yes, it is. He said, I don't want you going through the motions. I don't want you just coming to church because it's Sunday and it makes you feel good. Right. But come and give me worship. Yes. Come and just remember the, the, the grace and the loving kindness I've bestowed on you this week. Come together with someone else who is in love with me so you can fall in love all over again. Yes. Remembering that I'm God. That I've delivered and I've saved and I've changed you. You're no longer destined for hell, but because you belong to me, you're destined for greater things. We have to remember our first love and never leave it because it's, it's not a stumble. Honey, that's a fallout. That's a full fall. Because God said if you don't repent, I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to excommunicate you. I'm going to just not even remember that you were a part of this body. Is, is that important? Do you think that's a serious thing? For me, it's a serious thing. So we have to get back to our first love. Paying attention and doing what's right. Amen no longer going through the motions. I don't want Amazing Grace to be the church that stumbles on straight streets. I want the church associated with all the good things that we have done in the community that people come and note us for. But let's do it with a heart of love for, for God and a love for His people rather than just doing something to be doing something. I don't want the church to stumble. 
So he said, repent. And start doing the first thing. That means getting up and giving God the day back. That means getting up and just thanking Him for keeping you through the night. That means getting up and if your arms work, but God, I thank you that my arms work. I can move my leg and my foot don't hurt as much as it did yesterday. Whatever you need me to do, want me to do, just tell me and I'll do it. Because you know when you got saved, you could leap over a wall, uh, run through a troop and leap over a wall and it didn't matter. So we have to have that king same fervency even now. Right. And when you feel that you have gotten cold, then come and talk to somebody who loves the Lord. And let them just share with you the goodness and the mercy, the grace that comes into our understanding now. Because the uh, trailer truck missed you by that much. But that was all it took for you not to be in an accident. The, 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 the bullet went by the house instead of through the house. Come on, somebody. Yes. Amen. Because of his grace. He said, start doing the first works. Start doing the stuff you used to do. So you can love him all over again. Just like you take a look at that man and go, he ain't so bad. Or you take a look at that woman and go, I know why I fell in love with her. Then let's take a look at God. Let's take a look at Jesus. Let, let every season unveil a new fresh love because he went to the cross for you. You are not worthy for him to die, but he went to the cross because he loved you enough to go. And not only to the cross, but he laid there and died so you don't have to die. And then he went to the grave and he said, I have to get up because Wanda needs me. I have to get up because Saran needs to believe in a Savior. He has to get up because Tyree needs somebody to believe in. So he didn't just rest in the grave, but he got up because he loved us. And then he went from the earth back to so he could sit on his throne of, and glory and orchestrate our details, orchestrate our life. So let's fall in love with him again. Let's start doing those first things so that the fervency of our love, because if you just going through the motion, I'm telling you, it's serious. He said, repent, or I will cut you off and disavow knowledge of you. We don't want the church to stumble on a street called street. Amen. 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 Amen.